Hi there guys, Ken here, your Thrifty Apprentice. Uh, let's see, and in today's video, I figured it was time that we had another installment of the Five Below um, art series. So here we have the Five Below 38 piece premium watercolor cake set. Uh, this set was gifted to me by someone who knew that I was um, doing the Five Below series and I would like to thank them very, very, very much. I really appreciate it. So um, what we're doing in this video, let's see, um, we are probably gonna be doing an unboxing, a swatching, um, more than likely a little quick painting demo and then a really quick review of the paints. Um, it's all in one video. Some parts will more than likely be sped up just to save some time. Um, but all of the important and relevant information will definitely be kept full time, real time, I'm sorry. Okay, so here we go. 38 piece premium watercolor cake set uh, includes 36 watercolor cakes, one paintbrush and one water brush pen. Now, if all else fails and the paints turn out to be crap, it looks like the tin might be okay. So, you know, and I know these were only like probably five bucks if I blow, maybe 10 at the most. So, yeah, five day drawing prompts. Now, it seems that the back of the tin contained the same prompts that were included in the little prompt pamphlet from the illustration markers that we used and reviewed if you remember if not you guys can go back and check out that video and if i can remember i will try my best to create a playlist specifically for the five below videos in this particular series if i haven't already if i haven't already i will not sure so uh, the rest of the information says that it was distributed by 1616 Holdings Incorporated. It, uh, it gives the address in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and it lets you know that it's made in China. And the product conforms to the ASTM D4236 regulations. So, that's pretty much all that it has on it now. Like the illustration markers, uh, most of their products do not have a name. Um, so I'm just going to see if I can get this open really quick so we can get in here to this. I really want to see um, how sturdy this tin is, too. Um, ironically, I think I'm probably more interested in it than the paints. And that's unfortunate. Um, okay, so. Yeah, we have a pretty decent tin. It's thin. Let's pop this open here and see if we can get it open. It looks like it's hinged on one side. I'm gonna pull that off just to get it open. Uh, I couldn't get my, okay. So it, the tin is hinged on this side. That information was actually printed directly on the tin and on the back of the tin, just so you guys will know that. Uh, so I'm gonna open this, let's see here. It's gold on the inside. I mean, you know, it's cute. <laughs> reflective so here we have how many was it 38 cakes of course it's a five below five ten dollar set so there are no names no numbers no pigment information um, but this is an extreme extreme budget set so that's to be expected um it does have a little brush included let's see if i can get that out around this way to me all right here we go. Um, there is no information printed on that barrel and it does look to, it's plastic and it's actually a little warp there. It's not exactly a straight brush. Those are synthetic brush hairs. And I don't know if you can see that, but they are uneven. Again, five below, five below. You know, so I keep telling myself that because that's the ex expectation I'm setting for myself as we look at these. The whole point of this series is to see if five below offer art products that could actually be used to create, you know, decent art with, especially if it's all that you could possibly afford. Now here we have a standard um, water brush pen. It looks to be the exact same grade of the water brush pens that um, we use in the DIY um, brush markers we made. If you guys remember that video, you know me. I'll try to link it if I can remember. But here, 
Remember, I don't know if you guys remember, we made these. We got these barrels from the Dollar Tree. Um, I do believe that this is the exact same barrel. No doubt about it. Exact same barrel that was included in those packs we got from the Dollar Tree. So, yeah, there you have it. It's got like a number four round tip on it. And I'm probably going to end up just throwing it in the drawer with all of the other water brushes that I have. So let's see. This tray seems to be removable. Let's see if I can get it out of here. Okay, there we go. So, and then there's a tin. Now, if all else fails, that is going to become a palette for some other paints, possible pencils. I can even use it for uh, ephemeral storage tin for the tags and the cards that I make for the art journals and the junk journals that we do on the channel. So the tin is actually going to turn out to be pretty useful. You watch what I tell you. Now, here, what we're going to do, because that is pretty much what you get in that package. What we're going to do now is I am going to um, grab some watercolor paper and we are going to swatch the paints. Um, we'll give them our own numbering system, 1 through 38, based on the way that they're already in the tray. That way we can make a swatch palette and be able to match our colors. Uh, those pellets are definitely, you know, machine cut. Those cakes are, they are glued in. I cannot tell you how deep. If I was to turn it over, if that pellet goes down to the bottom of that well, that's actually a lot of paint now whether or not it's good quality paint is another question but that is a lot of paint for there to be 38 cakes if though if the and it does seem it feels hard so i think that cake does go all the way to the bottom of that particular pan so I'm going to say that's that's a that's an extreme amount of paint, especially in dry form. So we're going to swatch them, um, take a look at them. And then from there, we'll move into doing a little quick painting demo with them.
there guys we have gotten through the swatching um i'm about to move into doing the demo painting um i wanted to also try while i was doing this some new bristol board that i picked up from jerry's autorama um this is the soho urban artist brand now i've tried other soho products i have actually tested and reviewed the Soho Urban Artist um, watercolor tube set. Now that line or that set of watercolors unfortunately has been discontinued. The only thing um, they continue to make or that they make now is a um, like half pan collection. They call it the Soho Easy watercolors if I'm not mistaken. Uh, been debating on whether I was going to try those. I haven't made my mind up yet, but I was in the store and I did come across this Bristol board, which is actually much more economical than buying Master's Touch Bristol board, even at the 40% off. So I'm gonna give this a whirl. And this may be one of the very first papers I ever review on the channel, depending on um, whether or not I think this is gonna be worth it, or maybe Soho will end up being just like Master's Touch one day. Uh, uh, big video at any rate um i just kind of wanted to let you guys know i'm testing the soho urban artist um bristol board as we do the painting demo as well as testing the paints so here we are with the demo guys i am not sure what happened to the very first part of this video where i was painting in the stem and the leaf area with um the more yellow green color that's in this set but nevertheless um i did get that done and get that down the paints are a bit goopy and you know a uh, really funny texture to work with so you'll see that i have some derwent ink tints not ink tints but some regular derwent watercolor pencils and i'm kind of trying to go over um the areas where i've already laid down the watercolor in order to add more saturation and more richness to the areas um I noticed that the paints were kind of hard to use. I had to scrub a lot, constantly re-wet to get the pigment to release. Um, and then once the pigment did release, you have to use two or three layers to really get any, any type of saturation. And then of course the fillers in the paints, once you get two or three layers lead to the paints being kind of cakey and chalky on the paper. And of course, guys will give any noise you hear in the background by this point. You guys know the drill. I do some of my voiceovers at work, so you may hear a little something in the background. Um, just look over it. They're not talking about anything art related. <laughs> so um, after I kind of went back and touched up some of the green, areas along with the uh, shadow areas of the green with those uh, watercolor pencils. I'm taking a uh, number two synthetic brush, just a golden tack line. Remember I tell you, they work really well to move watercolor pigment, uh, watercolor pencil pigment. Um, and I'm just using the same color green that I originally painted the leaf and the stem area with from the paint set. I'm actually using that to blend um, the stem and the leaf area. And I'm just gonna work back and forth between the paints and the watercolor pencils until I can get some type of consistency that I like with um, the texture uh, that was going on in the composition. But I'll be honest, I was really, really frustrated throughout the entire course of this painting. I really, really was. So here I'm gonna switch over to trying to use some of the reds and blend with some of the reds. I grabbed the more vermilion looking color, which is, you know, like a ready orange or orangey red um, in order to um, go ahead and lay down the base layer of each of the rose buds. Now I'm gonna use that to base in all of the buds and then I'm gonna go back in with um, the more rosy color of the red choices from that 38 count set. Um, if I had to just guess a color that it should be emulating, it would probably be more like a quinacridone rose, um, magenta, magenta e sort of color. Um, but that's what's going to be used in order to paint in the shadow areas and to do the shading. Um, once I actually get to that point. But here you're just going to see me going back and forth working with the texture of that 
paint um as you can see there it is just i don't know it is so streaky and it held all of my brush strokes it was it was so hard to get a flat even um wash of color um so then i decided hey you know what i'm going to probably end up using colored pencils on this so let me switch over and grab my master's touch watercolor pencils which is what i did and i took um, a more orangey vermilion color and a more rosy color from the watercolor pencil set in order to go in and lay down extra color and try to enhance both the original layer and the shadow layer of the rosebuds now here is what i discovered because the texture of the paint itself was so like weird and funny um mixing the consistency of a watercolor pencil into it did not make it better it actually kind of added to the sort of goopiness because you know watercolor pencils the formulation is not the same as watercolor paint um, it has to have a different formulation in order to hold those pigments into a solid lid form and whatever uh, all of the makeup of a watercolor pencil is once it was mixed into the uh, makeup of whatever these paints are it just did not give me the flat wash that it would normally do you know it did not add to or enhance they didn't work well together simply because the paints themselves um, were of such low quality and that's unfortunate to say so after i played around with watercolor pencils you'll see here i also grabbed my master's touch colored pencils to go back in and kind of doing a preliminary all over layer of everything just to try to blend down all the colors try to get um, my values right my highlights my my shading i just really needed to get everything more uniform and better appeasing to the eye so i decided to just cover everything in color pencils and of course i'm using my master's touch color pencils because one i'm testing them for review and two they are the exact same as the watercolor pencils so i was able to match the colors up name for name which was really really good and you'll get to see all of that when we get around to that big old master's touch video i keep talking about which i am going to get to in april there will be no if and or buts about that that is on my calendar i've already penciled it in so here you'll see i am just going and shading in the areas that i need to um, with a little bit darker of a green it's more of a, the grass green color from this set um, i use the um, apple green if i'm not mistaken to lay down the base layer but i do believe that between the watercolor pencils and the color pencils in combination with what Ever pigmentation I was able to get from these paints I was eventually able to pull off a composition that I was halfway happy with and say okay this is a bookmark I can go with oh yeah spoiler alert I was creating a bookmark here yeah so now to tie everything in together I'm grabbing a fine liner and I'm going back and I am outlining the entire composition now my original plan was to have no uh, black lining on this had the paints work the way they should in any shape, form, or fashion, but they didn't. So, you know, you have to use what you can in order to pull off the composition that you want. I tell you guys that all the time. I don't believe in all of these rules that hinder you from creating the best art that you possibly can. As long as it's not harming or hurting anyone, as long as you're not harming or hurting yourself, use what you need you can do this composition in anything from watercolors to pencils to color pencils to acrylics to, uh, water soluble pastels chalk pastels whatever you may want to use you can do that now i'm just going to take some of that paint and all the different colors that i use i'm splashing it in the background in order to give a little bit more movement behind the tag since it was just the rosebud composition and that's pretty much it guys i'll see you on the other end here we are we have had a chance to swatch the paints we've had a chance to do a painting demo now let's jump into a really quick um just kind of overview review of kind of what i think about the paints now typically i would take much longer before i offer a review on a particular paint um and 
I did try to keep in mind going into this process that these are $5 paints from Five Below. So, you know, I did kind of have that in mind throughout the time that I was painting um, and swatching. So, as you know, they came in this tin. <clears throat> and it opens to this 38 count cake set of watercolors. Um, now, there is a large range of colors here. I'm, I'm trying to remove this. Oh yeah, I wanna take it out. <clears throat> because I did want to show again that that is removable and the tin itself can be used for something else, which I am immediately going to repurpose the tin. Because I say a lot of different times, you know, you can use the packaging for something else. And yeah, so this time I really am. I'm gonna be using that probably in the next video or two. Um, so here is what we had. Now, as far as the cakes themselves were concerned, I'll say this. Um, they don't wear easily. You do have to put a little pressure or apply a little pressure to the cake when you're trying to remove the color from it in order to get it to release. Um, that way you can start creating, you know, your wash, your photos for your washes or what have you. So the pellets or the cakes themselves do absorb water um, quicker than most other paints um, and they are a bit gritty in texture um, after they've been wet and once they dry down. I'm not sure if you guys can see that. So, you know, that is a indicator of fillers and stretchers of pigments. Now, I'm not sure if or what the pigment information or what the pigment makeup the, of these paints are, but um, I will say the pigmentation is weak. So let's take a look at the swatching. Slide that over. So as you can see here, the paints dry with a really um, thick and chalky consistency. Now they do they don't smudge and I think throughout the swatching I may have been testing the smudging you may have seen me me doing that the paints don't smudge but they do definitely dry with a chalky kind of super economical feel to them as you can see now the texture here is typically what I expect from a really economical or cheap tube paint um, I was really surprised that this was the texture I was getting. I mean, it was leaving a lot of brush strokes. Throughout the swatching, I had to layer, you know, two, sometimes three layers in order to get enough saturation in the color to call it a swatch. That way I would be able to reference the color whenever I was using them to paint. So there was definitely something to take note of. Um, as you can see here from the opacity test, all of the paints are super super opaque um they are full of fillers i just want to bring that up a little closer hopefully you guys can see that on each one of the swatch squares the um black line is going to have some type of chalky coverage so the paints definitely are not good for layering however if you don't layer them you're not going to really get the saturation and color that you may be looking for in order to you know, move on with the paints. And that is really unfortunate because I believe um, sets like this are produced to target like beginners and kids and um, people who may just be trying to dabble in watercolor just a little bit in order to see if it's something that they want to pursue. And then you run across a set like this. Now, is it economical? Yes, it is. However, there just there were just things about it just from the initial use of swatching that I feel like would turn um, a beginner painter off from watercoloring. And you can actually see just by looking at the swatch sheet what I mean about the consistency of the paints once they dry down. Now, because I had to use two or three layers to get the saturation in, I'm not exactly sure what the color shift is from wet to dry. Um, there is a bit of one from what I did, so I would assume that if I was using less layers with more water and less of the paint in the mixture, 
they would dry even lighter. So that's something to take note of. Uh, let's see. They did not react too well to the salt test, which is surprising because just last video when we were in um, reviewing the Master's Touch 48 half pan set, I made the comment that, you know, I typically expect watercolor paints to react well to the salt test. They normally do, most normally do. And then here is the exception to that rule. This is the first time I think I've ever tested a paint other than, other than maybe um, those creative U paints that were in that water uh, watercolor kit from Walmart um, that we did a little testing and reviewing of. And this is probably only the second one that I've ever seen not really react well to salt. Now, I would typically do a lift test here, but I'm gonna be honest, I just, I really don't even really see, <clears throat> excuse me, see the point, but you know what? It's what we do. So let me clean my scrubber here. And then we are going to attempt this lift test and see if we can get any of um, this to lift out. Let's see here. Well, look at that. It looks like it definitely lifts with no issue. I mean, but I really... can lift that out quite well. There we go. So as you can see, it'll lift out. Um, that's probably one of the best things is about it. In all honesty, it'll lift. Here I did a little color mixing. It was really hard to achieve a gray black tone. Um, that's normally really easy to achieve when you're using primaries. Um, I used the most primary of the colors that I could pull out. I used um, number five in the yellow. Um, and again, I labeled them in the order that I swatched them based on the way that they're in the um, palette. That's how I came up with the numbering system. So number five, which would have been this yellow, I used as the primary. I used number 13, um, this more rosy magenta, maybe cranacridone, rosy looking color um, is the red. And then I used number 26, or was it 28? No, it was 26. It was this one, which I felt like was more phthalo bluish. So those are the colors I went with in order to do the color mixing. Now, for, uh, for the most part, they did mix to create the colors that they were supposed to. Were they the cleanest mixtures in the world? Absolutely not. That's because the paints individually, you know, may have more fillers in them than you would get in other um, economical brands of paints. And I say that because I do know of other brands that you can get in the five to ten dollar mark, um, especially if you can find them on sale where where you would, um, you know, get a better quality in the paints. Again, keeping in mind that they're five dollars. So. That was the swatching and the color testing. All of that was okay. So then I decided I was going to do a little painting demo with the paints. And I was going to paint a little rosebud. Um, a little rosebud paint. So that was quite a catastrophe. I'll be honest. That was probably one of the most difficult paints I've ever done. Now here is... The final results of the little painting demo that we that we did, excuse me, um, in this video. Now, my point behind it was to see if I could use the paints in reproduction. I was going to use them to create tags, right? Um, so when I kind of sketched out the little rosebud, that's what I wanted to do. However, the paints just <clears throat> they wouldn't. Even in small sections, they wouldn't lay down flat. I couldn't get a really even consistency. They seemed really goopy and left a lot of brush strokes. So um, I thought maybe I could help them out. I whipped out um, some of my Durwent watercolor pencils um, and some of the Master's Touch Fine Art Studio watercolor pencils. 
Um, and I kind of went through to try to add some pigment to help it out to see if maybe I could get the layers um, of colors more consistent, more even. Um, but unfortunately, the cons the makeup of the watercolor pencils mixed in with the kind of already, I guess, goopy, streaky texture of the paint kind of made the situation a little bit worse and I was really frustrated. Um, I was going to give up on it and then I decided what I would do was let everything that I had already done dry and then I grabbed uh, my Master's Touch Fine Art Studio colored pencils which I'm testing for review um, and decided to go in and kind of treat the composition as um, color pencil work where I was using the watercolors and the watercolor pencils as the first layer um, to put down the base color. Um, for all intents and purposes, it turned out okay. I do not by any means think it is the best painting I've ever done. But um, I did some splatters in the background with the watercolors. And then after I finished the painting demo, um, I cut, I just cut the top in tag form. Um, I added in some some stickers here. Um, this little saying says, it always seems impossible until it's done. Um, I've used that saying before in other uh, journal work, and I thought that was re very appropriate for what I felt and what I was going through with the creation of the focal image for this card. Um, this just says, keep going. Again, appropriate for the things I felt I was going through. Um, I found this really cute little lady butterfly in my collection and added that in. And then of course, we added some pizzazzle dazzle to the top. I laminated the entire thing and cut it out. This is meant to serve as a bookmark. Um, so at the end, the project turned out okay for me for the purposes I had in mind when I originally set out. But had I been trying to do a real piece of artwork with these, I would have been so upset and so frustrated and so mad. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this all up. Um, we've had the chance to unbox, swatch, do a painting demo, and now my final conclusions would just be that I do not believe that this would be the best set for a beginner or for um, anyone to, that's, who's trying to learn watercolors um, to use, to paint with. Even if you're an experienced watercolor artist or, or an experienced mixed media artist or just artist, period, I believe you would still have a little frustration simply because you have to work so hard to get the paints to cooperate with you in a way um, that you may be satisfied with your composition or you have to mix them with other products um, in order to put off the composition that you're trying to achieve. So I think all of that is something to think about if you're thinking about purchasing this set. If by chance you already have this set, it is not my intentions in any way to make you feel bad about it. Um, this, it, The things that I'm saying are just simply my opinions based on my experience um, with these paints in comparison to the many other brands um, and sets of paints that I've tried. That's, that's the only angle that I'm taking from. So uh, if you have them, I say work with them the best that you can until you can get to the point where there's something else that you may be able to purchase because there are a lot of economical budget brands out there that are um, going to give you much better results and much and, and will be much better, especially if, if you're in the beginning stage and learning process. With that said, do I believe that they were are worth the 5 to $10 that... Um, if I below may be charging for this set, I do believe that this is a set that I would pass on. Um, and not unless you're going to buy it. If it's $5 and you're buying it to just get the 10, which I'm about to repurpose very shortly, along with the water brush, then, yeah, no, I don't even think that's worth $5. So, but, yep. Yeah, so, there you have it, guys. Um, if you... Uh, heard anything or saw anything that you felt was helpful or useful, please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Oh, let me show you what I'm doing with the tag right quick. Go ahead and share the video. Remember that sharing is caring and that there may be someone else out there 
who um, may find this information helpful or useful. Don't forget to check us out on all of the social media sites. That's Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. I would love to have all of you guys there, including the Thrifty Apprentice um, sponsored Facebook group, Paints, Pencils, Pastels, and Markers, where we do everything artsy and crafty. Everybody is welcome. It is growing. Love everybody in that group. Thank you guys so much for your support, as well as all of the viewers of the channel. Now, real quick, I'm going to show you what I'm doing. Of course, by now, you may have seen this before. This is the Jane Davenport um, art journal that I am turning into one of my art books. And if you do not know what that is, an art book is a mixture of an art journal and a junk journal where you use art journaling techniques with junk journal junk. So here, um, I'm creating a fold out in it. Um, this was a um, composition that I was doing with Daniel Smith paints. I was testing them. I think I'm going to finish this. Um, with those paints so that I can incorporate it into the flower thing going all the way across here. So I added in this little fold out, which if you watch any of my um, journaling videos that come out on Sunday, this eventually may be a project that you end up seeing. But the whole point was to add another flower, created this pocket here into this section and that bookmark is just gonna sit right in there just like so. Yes, that is so nice. I think that is so cute. And then I can take it out and clip it in different parts of the book. And it's original artwork. I'm actually adding original artwork into the journal that was not already in here using junk journaling techniques. And that is the whole premises of an art book. Love it, love it, love it. So I'm just gonna tuck that in there. I'm gonna close that up and I have another addition to my art book all done. So there you have it guys. Thank you so much. And remember, as I tell you at the end of every single video, just keep painting and crafting. Mm -hmm.